Hello everyone, welcome back to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. I'm Matt Schmelzer, one of the instructors here. Uh, and today we're teaming up with Practical Machinist uh, to bring this video to you guys. And today we're looking at some inspection processes. Uh, in our previous video, we went through a programming technique uh, to cut thread mills on a part, one of the projects that our students go through. So this was the example that we had uh, machined the threads on in the vertical machining center. And now today we're going to go through the inspection process and actually measure these threads to make sure they meet the specifications. Now on the board behind me I have all of our specifications on those threads. Again, just to uh, reiterate, we had a 2 inch diameter thread, uh, 10 threads per inch, and that is a 2A classification fit. So that's your general purpose uh, uh, fit. Uh, looking back at some of the uh, detailed specifications for these particular threads, because it's a 2A fit, we looked at our major diameter. That was the outside diameter of our threads. And in the machinery's handbook, we'll look at in a minute, we had an upper and a lower limit. So that basically gave us our tolerance range for the major diameter. So uh, in our programming technique, we actually did some programming to find the target diameter. That's what we're going to machine this to. Uh, in a perfect world, we're always going to kind of shoot for the middle of that. So that was our target diameter. We took the upper and lower limits, added them together, and divided by two. And then the next was our pitch, which is the distance from one thread to the next. So we take one divided by our threads per inch. Our pitch on this uh, particular thread was 0 0.1, 100 thousandths. And now we're going to throw in an, an additional uh, dimension in on this for measuring, and we're looking at the pitch diameter. And again, this came out of our machinery handbook. Uh, it does too have an upper and a lower limit for our outside diameter threads. So we had an upper limit of one inch, 933, a lower limit of one inch, 9265. Now, a little bit about the pitch diameter. I got just kind of a drawing up on our board here. And the pitch diameter is basically a theoretical diameter going through those threads in the middle. So essentially where that pitch diameter runs through our thread, it's a diameter where the thickness of our thread is exactly the same as the groove in between the threads. So these two distances right here are the same. As that pitch diameter gets larger, the width of the thread gets smaller, the groove gets bigger. In the opposite direction, as the groove gets smaller, the width of the thread gets larger. And that directly affects the fit of the thread between the male and the female part. So we're going to cut out and look at a couple different ways of actually measuring the fit of the thread. All right, so uh, where all these numbers came from, uh, we're looking at our 30th edition Machinery's Handbook here. This is what our students are using. Uh, there's a couple different versions out there, perfectly acceptable. All the same information is in them. So when I go to find this information, this is a pretty large book. There's a lot of information in here. So when we look at the end of the book, we have a series of thumb tabs on here. And there is one thumb tab that is labeled threading. So I'm going to flip open to our threading thumb tab right here. And uh, there's a lot of uh, different information categories when it comes to threading. Everything from different types of threads, different types of fasteners, so on and so forth. So we flip back a few pages within our threading tab in our machinery's handbook. Uh, roughly 10 to 15 pages and we start coming up to all of these tables that talk about standard series selected combinations of unified screw threads. So it starts right off at a 080. So again, our thread is a two inch 10 2A. So I'm just gonna flip back a few pages until I find my specific thread here. Now there are two sides to these pages. One covers external threads, one turn covers internal threads. So we're over here on the external thread. So I'm just going to drill down the far side until I find my two inch 10 thread the classification of fit 2A. Of course, there is allowance uh, chart also for those threads. And then we get to the major diameter. And this is where I got my upper and lower limits for my major diameter. And again, when we uh, machined that outside diameter, we found the middle of that. When we go over, there is a section sometimes for a reference dimension on the minor diameter, but we'll follow over to the 
opposite side here and we have pitch diameter again these are our upper and lower pitch diameter limits and this is what's going to control the fit on our major or I'm sorry our pitch diameter so again to find the middle of the road our target will add those two and divide them so let's look at some different tools for measuring so the first tools we're going to look at here are ring gauges um, I have a couple of them here now these ring gauges are specific for the pitch diameter so these are made for the classification of fit, which is a 2A, and they are made for our 2 inch 10 thread. Now, usually with ring gauges, uh, you'll have either, you know, an upper and a lower limit ring gauge. And it's basically one will go on, the other one will not go on. The term uh, go, no go gauge relates to these. Um, a lot of times you'll find uh, all the information etched or stamped into the face of these tools. And these are calibrated uh, to the whatever specific pitch diameter is on the face of these tools. This one here happens to be for an inch and a half six unified thread. Now, a lot of times uh, you don't always see, you know, some of these will be colored red and green for go and no go. They'll sometimes be attached in a set, makes them uh, so they don't get separated. Uh, but one way of always identifying go and no-go gauges, your go gauge is going to be just a plain outside uh, profile. Some of these are knurled for grip. But your no-go gauge is always going to have a groove on the outside perimeter of it. So this one here is knurled, but you can see the addition of a groove. And this groove is always going to specify a no-go gauge. So this one should not be able to thread on to your particular part. Now, measuring these tools do not measure. All they do is basically say your threads are either good or not good. Anywhere in between uh, is unknown with these tools. So let's step it up to the next tool that we're gonna look at to actually measure our pitch diameters. All right, so the next set of tools we're looking at is a pitch micrometer. Here I got a couple of different variations. Uh, one made by uh, Mitch Toya Company. Here's an SPI version. Uh, now our pitch micrometers, just like standard micrometers, uh, usually go in one inch increments. So you got your zero to one, one to two, so on and so forth, uh, one inch travel ranges. Uh, we're gonna be using this one right here. This is our one to two inch uh, pitch micrometer. Now, uh, some of these pitch micrometers have fixed anvils on them where you can't interchange them. Uh, those are dedicated for a certain pitch, uh, whatever it may be purchased for. This particular one here, we have interchangeable anvils. This allows us to cover pretty much the entire spectrum for our unified threads. So starting off with this set of anvils, 44 to 28 threads per inch, 24 to 14 threads per inch, and then our next one here, 13 to 9 threads per inch. So that's where our 10 threads per inch is going to fall in. So I'm going to use these two anvils. Now these anvils, uh, one side is going to have a conical shape. The other side is going to have a V notch in it. So I'll go ahead and I'll grab my pitch micrometer and I'll take my conical anvil. I always like to place it in the top. Uh, it really doesn't matter which side is which. So once I get the anvils picked out and selected, the next thing to do is to set our pitch micrometer to our standard. Now I have a one inch standard that I'll be using here, so I'll set my pitch micrometer right to one inch. So I'm gonna rotate this until I get one inch on the thimble, and then I'm gonna lock that in place so it doesn't rotate. Now on the opposite side, we have a movable anvil also. This will rotate in or out raising and lowering that. So I'm going to use uh, just a mic stand here to assist me in this. So I'm going to go ahead and just clamp this in the mic stand. And then I'm going to grab my standard. And now again this is set to one inch and I'll make all my adjustment on the opposite side now. So I'll bring this in one side in the v-notch, the other side in the groove. And I'm just going to adjust my lower anvil until I see the standard is set, which is right there. So now I have my pitch micrometer calibrated to my one inch standard. Anytime these anvils are taken out or interchanged, this tool has to be recalibrated. So now I'll go ahead and lock that in place. And this is set to use. 
All right, so now that I have my pitch micrometer calibrated with the correct anvils for the pitch of the thread, we're gonna go through and actually take the measurement of our part. Now, how I do this is I usually get the V notch situated on the thread groove or on the outside of the thread itself. And then I'll slide the conical anvil into the groove between the threads. So I'm gonna just bring this down to my part and I'm gonna just grab a thread on that part and I'm gonna slide that V groove anvil onto the thread. And then on the opposite side, I'm just gonna rotate my thimble into the groove on the opposite side. And it's just like taking a measurement on the outside diameter of a regular part. So we're just finding that high spot at that point. So at this point, I found the high spot. I have the conical shape in the groove, the V anvil on the outside of the thread. I can take my measurement compare it to what I got in the machinery's handbook and adjust accordingly. All right, the final method we're gonna look at for measuring threads is the three wire method. Now you can purchase these uh, three wire kits uh, through a lot of uh, tool suppliers. They're available, uh, a lot of different companies are making these. Uh, this is gonna be the most economical way of measuring pitch diameters on threads. This is a very inexpensive set uh, anywhere from $20 to $70 for these sets, depending on the name brand. Uh, you'll get a lot of different diameter wires, which we'll look at here. Uh, some are accompanied with a chart to simplify uh, finding your measurement. Uh, behind me on the board is essentially an illustration on what we're using these pins for. Uh, we'll use two pins on one side of our thread and one pin on the opposite side, situated in the groove of the thread. And then we're just going to use just a standard micrometer, flat anvil, to measure the distance over those pins, all right, or wires. So there's a little bit of math formula involved with these. Is one, determining the correct size of the wire based off of the pitch of our thread. And again, the pitch is the distance from one thread to the next thread. In our particular thread, that's 0.1, 100 thousandths. So to figure out what the largest wire you can possibly use on this part, there's a formula we're gonna use, 1.010 times the pitch, which is 0.1. So the largest diameter wire we can use to measure this thread is 101 thousandths in diameter. The next is the best wire. This is gonna give us the most accurate dimension over our pitch diameter. And our best wire diameter is 0.57735 times the pitch. So our best wire size is going to come out to 0 0.0577 in diameter. And then the smallest possible wire size we could use is going to equal 0 0.505 times the pitch, which is 0 0.0505. So anywhere in between 101 thousandths and 50 and a half thousandths, we can pick for a wire diameter. The most optimal is going to be 0 0.0577. So I'm going to go to my wire set and see if I have anything close to 57 thousandths, and that's the wire I'm going to use. Uh, in our particular set that I have here at the school, we have a 55 thousandths diameter wire. That's fairly close and it's not below our smallest size. So I'm gonna use the 55 thousandths diameter wire. Now, the formula to determine what that measurement needs to be over those 55 thousandths wire, you're gonna see, we're gonna take our major diameter now, going back to our machinery's handbook, we had our upper and lower limit. We're gonna use that middle dimension that we determined before, which was 1.9915. So we take our major diameter plus three times the wire size, so three times 55 thousandths, and that's gonna equal 165 thousandths. And then we're gonna subtract this common number here, which is 1.5155 times our pitch, which is 0.1. And we come up with a dimension of 0 0.1515. So we do that entire formula, major diameter, the middle of our limits, plus our three times the wire diameter, 165 minus 0.1515, that constant times the pitch. And we determine that our measurement over those 55 thousandths diameter wires is two inch five thousandths. So let's go to the part and measure that. 
All right, so I'm over here with our part again, and I picked out my 55 thousandths wires out of my set. So again, there's three wires. We're gonna use two on one side, one on the opposite side. Uh, the next tool we're gonna use, just a standard one to two inch micrometer. And then this can sometimes be a little bit cumbersome. So I went to uh, just any general hardware store or craft store, and I just found some modeling clay here. Uh, we use this in our inspection room. You'll find this a lot of times in shops, just some uh, stick it clay. And this is gonna help me hold these wires in place while I take my measurement. So I'm gonna go ahead and just situate two wires on one side of my part. So I'm gonna go right next to each other adjacent. So I'm just gonna hold these for a second. And then I'm gonna place one wire on the opposite side. Real similar to our anvils on our micrometer in the last measurement. And then I'm just gonna use this clay and just stick the ends of my pins in there just to hold them in place. I'll use my other hand here. Again, this sometimes takes a little bit of practice, but it definitely helps when holding the pins. And I'll just stretch that clay over and now I can hold it in place and take my measurement. So at this point, now I'm just gonna use my standard micrometer and measure my distance over those three pins. So again, I can take my measurement, find your highest spot and compare the measurement to what we just calculated, two inch five thousandths. So that's the three wire method. Now, along with our three wire uh, measuring set here, uh, came this chart. And this chart really helps simplify things uh, versus the way we did it on the board. But as we all know in a machine shop, these charts tend to get tore up, ripped, or lost, or misplaced. So, but anyways, here it gives us a couple of columns with our threads per inch. So I'm gonna arrow down to 10 threads per inch, and it tells us the actual wire size that we should be using. And then it has a couple of add and constant uh, columns here. Now in this particular set, if you read the instructions, we're looking at the constant column. In this case here, it is 0 0.0784. If we took our measurement that we actually got over these pins and subtracted that constant, that's gonna tell us what our actual pitch diameter is. So again, going back to the machinery's handbook, you got your upper and lower pitch diameter limits, we would compare it to what we actually figured out. Measurement over pins, subtracting the constant. So this kind of helps simplify things, but again, can't always guarantee this. It gets lost, misplaced, tore up, uh, illegible. Um, so knowing these formulas on the board definitely helps. So that was measuring threads for today. I want to thank you for joining us. Join us next time.